Will we have the lawyer from the community, very well known, Mr. Carranza, Juan Carranza, who also will, will be part of the panel. Would you please come to the table? Fantastic. So, in, um, welcome again. We are in a festive mood in a way because it's uh, the 10th anniversary of ALBA. And this is a major, a major accomplishment for our continent that started, as Aura mentioned, and Susana also mentioned, out of this meeting of two of the great figures of Latin American history in the late 20th and, and 21st century, Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro. Uh, people that, you know, Chavez and Fidel. They don't, you don't need to add more names. Everybody around the world knows who they are. Like the Brazilian soccer players. It's Pelé, you don't need, nobody knows his last name, it's just Pelé. Same with Fidel, and same with, with Chavez. Everyone around the world knows who these people are. They came together to challenge the status quo and to give hope, you know, to, uh, to the continent, to give hope, in fact, to the world. I was encouraged a few months ago at a solidarity event. Someone from the progressive Jewish community came and, uh, and, and approached me and said, you know, um, I'm thinking about what's happening around the world, the, the, the terrible tragedy of the Middle East, what's happening in Afghanistan, what has been going on in Africa, and uh, you know the only part, the region of the world, where there is some hope, where there's an alleviation of poverty, where there's uh, an improvement in the living conditions of people, has been in Latin America in the last ten years. And she said to me, "Hope speaks Spanish," <laughs> and, I, and I thought that was you know quite interesting. Anyways, um, I was asked to uh, be the moderator, <laughs> so, and I'm hogging the mic, that's what you're thinking, I'm thinking the no, same no, thing, no. so I'm going <laughs> to, you keep on helping me, because I need the help. We're thinking who was, was that spoke to you. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I we'll talk. We know. Yes, yes. So, anyways, we're going to turn it over. I, I thought that it might make a lot of sense, since Latin America is moving from the right to the left. <laughs> That we, but it depends on from which perspective, right? Yeah, I know, I know. So I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking we're gonna turn it over to uh, to Juan uh, Valencia so that we can start over here and then we will move along uh, towards the left. What do you say? <laughs> Guys, let's warm ourselves up by giving uh, Juan an applause. I, I'm from Bolivia originally. I've been living in Canada for the last 13 years. Uh, uh, back in Bolivia, I was involved with uh, for working for an NGO that basically was supporting uh, uh, small farmers and uh, organizations in the rural communities in in uh, Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia. I'm originally an agronomist by my first profession. Uh, thanks for the organizers of this event. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit from my perspective. Maybe I will represent the Bolivian perspective of what uh, ALBA signifies as today. Well, there's been uh, some, you know, historical uh, notes about the origin of ALBA. I want to touch a little bit on the, to me, to my perception, the real, you know, origin of uh, the idea of ALBA. Everybody remembers that in 1994, there was the first uh, summit of the Americas that was held in Miami, Florida, under Bill Clinton. On that day, on that first, in that first uh, summit of the Americas, uh, USA formulated the proposal of having a free trade agreement of the Americas in 1994. They projected that by 2005, after almost 10 or 11 years after that idea, to have that free trade agreement of the Americas that was going to start in Canada and go all over south to Argentina. So on those years, everybody will remember that in Latin America, we still have a lot of you know, neoliberal, pro-US, pro-Washington consensus governments that for different reasons, and after recovering the democracy in the 80s, in the 90s, we were invaded by you know, different political parties that embraced the idea of the neoliberal economic model, the Washington consensus, Therefore, the idea of the free trade 
agreement of the Americas was moving slowly, but it was going. It was until 2001 that after Chavez was elected in Granada in 1999, right? Mm -hmm. That Chavez came with a different idea. I mean, not idea, but a vision. All of the countries in Latin America were having big uh, uh, struggles financially, economically, because after almost 15 to 10 years of neoliberal models, you know, <coughs> structural adjustments and all the IMF and Glo uh, World Bank schemes to give development to our countries didn't work. So that's the starting point to understand the beginning, the conception of the genesis of the ALBA. Many other, uh, this summit of the Americas happens every four years. So uh, that was, to my viewpoint, a little bit of an advantage because every after four years you have time to, time to pressure because it was the U.S. interest to put a free trade agreement of the Americas similar as what is today the NAFTA, the uh, free trade agreement between Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. We were lucky that a figure like Chavez, Chavez came to the surface and I can recall personally, I was here in, in, in Canada by 2001 when we had the Summit of the Americas in Quebec City. I don't know if people remember, April 2001. A lot of, you know, young activists, many people from the left, you know, unions, were there present in Quebec City to, f to protest and to voice their concerns about this project that the U.S. and Canada and many other Latin American countries were, you know, given the, 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 the green light. So let's put into context, April 2001, uh, to me personally, I thought, I went to Quebec City and after the, 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 the declaration of the summit, at the end of the summit, everything, everything looked like this NAFTA, this FTAA, the Free Trade Agreement of the Americas, was going to become a reality. I was personally losing hope. And everybody knew what, what that type of agreement comes with. And luckily, many social movements across Latin America start having internal discussions in Bolivia, in Argentina, in Uruguay. They were, you know, these social movements start to question this idea and questioning their own governments, why they do want to have a free trade agreement where they're going to basically give up, you know, the sovereignty, you know, be subjects to, uh, to uh, judicial uh, uh, fights with corporations that will, you know, have a free ride in, in our continent, in our region. By 2001, on December, same year, there was a meeting in, in, uh, in, in, in Venezuela in Margarita Islands. It was the third summit of the heads of states of the Association of Caribbean States. It was 2001. Chavez gave the idea officially to the members of those states, and that was the origin of ALBA, 2001. That helped many social movements across Latin America. Bolivia, I can sp speak about Bolivia. Social movements were having in their ordinary meetings, ordinary assemblies of miners, peasants, all type of or social organizations have on their agendas a point to discuss the potential, you know, threats if FTAA will become reality. So luckily, also we had in Argentina a, a, a progressive government with uh, Nestor Kirchner, who unfortunately died, and simultaneously we had Lula in Brazil, that they become the strong, you know, opposition to, as, as the major economies in the region, as, you know, a presidents of the largest economies in South America, they stand strong and they were pushing the idea to, to avoid the free trade of the, of the uh, free trade agreement of the Americas. That's the starting point. By 2004, it became reality, the two first countries to uh, sign the, the statutes of, to constitute legally was Cuba and, and Fidel Castro, both great leaders recognized around the world. And we have 10 years of ALBA having 
you know, progress with a lot of challenges, of course, uh, many achievements at the same time. I would just point two that I consider important. Most important to me is that ALBA has, can be prized to be the spark of the integration uh, initiatives that came after. In 2004, ALBA was created. By 2008, we have the constitution of the UNASUR. And then we had, by 2011, uh, CELAC, that are supra-regional uh, supra organizations that embrace, on the first case, UNASUR, embrace all the South American countries, 12 in total, including two Anglophone countries and one Francophone. And CELAC, that is a larger organization that is basically goes beyond the regional and is challenging the status quo of the presence of the American Organization of States, the OAA, or OAS, that is being created in 1948 after, you know, sponsored by the U.S. with the, with the headquarters in Washington. And CELAC ultimately is, to me, the best, you know, that ALBA could have, you know, helped to promote. And secondly, as a big achievement, I would say that ALBA has become like the strong position in the continent against the U.S. meddling in internal affairs and the strong position against interference and defending the sovereignty of our people. That, I would say, are the two most important things that ALBA has accomplished. Uh, I think the time is, I still have some. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, I want to add also, in terms of, you know, because uh, Bolivia became a uh, member of the ALBA in 2006, right after Evo Morales was elected. Evo Morales was elected in 2005. He became president January the 1st, January 22nd in 2006. It means the Bolivia government under Evo Morales and the social movements, they didn't even thought twice about it. Right after they become pressed, become the, the movement towards socialism, socialism becoming to power, they joined ALBA. But Bolivia added something to this organization that originally was the alternative, Bolivarian alternative of the peoples of our America. Alternative because it was the alternative to Al ALCA, that was the Free Trade Agreement of the Americas. When Bolivia came, they proposed to add something because uh, an agreement of trade, you know, it's, it's a political thing, but it's also people interested in, in, in economic integration. So they proposed to put the People's Trade Agreement, like uh, Tratado uh, de los Pueblos, Tratado de Comercio de los Pueblos, People's Trade Agreement. In 2006, when uh, uh, Bolivia joined, ALBA was added, well, added another three letters to the name that's called now ALBA TCP. That's ALBA and TCP. That was the, 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 uh, the uh, benefit, I mean, not the benefit, but the, the, the addition that Bolivia came. And there's one reason why we, 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 the government of Bolivia, put that, because it makes sense when we talk about, when people talk about uh, trade agreements that, you know, Europeans and North Americans, they all wanna, always want to push the, the free trade agreement, the trade agreements. But those trade agreements only benefit the corporations, the transnational cor corporations. And Bolivia said, we should add this term because this, this integration should benefit the peoples, not the corporations. So we want to add specifically that this should be the People's Trade Agreement, a trade that intended to benefit the people as opposed to the free trade agreements that increases the powers and benefits of the transnational corporations. That's in 2006, the, the, the complete name of Alba TCP is born, and as today, it's still on. Well, I would add something very quickly. Another important thing in terms of uh, economic financial is the creation of the virtual currency that is called Sucre. It's something like you can imagine that everybody talks about today as the Bitcoins, right? 
that virtual money. Alba proposed that in 2008 as a way to avoid it, you know, the middlemen, the bankers, and also to have less dependency on the instability of the currencies in the region and also to the fluctuations of the dollar that is the, by default the, 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 the currency that everybody has to use if you want to make a international trading. So the Sucre uh, started in 2009. It's kind of very new thing. Alba is 2004. The Sucre is like a, another big step that has to be, uh, uh, we got to be more aggressive to make more countries involved, make more transactions. As today, around a billion dollars a year was traded in that virtual currency in 2013. It might look a very small amount, but it's it's a it's a good beginning, I would say. Almost a, uh, that amount of money represents that the central banks of these countries are helping directly the exporters and importers of those countries. I think that's one of the important things about about Alba as well, the Sucre. And also, as somebody mentioned, on the social uh, you know dimension, we we have. We have to name the great achievements of the uh, uh, literacy programs. Basically, in Bolivia, by 2008, after three years in power, with the help of the ALBA and the Cuban and Venezuelan <coughs> educators, Bolivia uh, uh, erased the illiteracy in 2008. If, that, if, 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 if it weren't by ALBA help, probably we wouldn't have achieved that. Similarly, the, the uh, in terms of health, we have the program that helps people with uh, visual problems, like uh, many Cuban doctors have come to my country and helped a lot of people to have operations free, and that's also a big achievement that ALBA has, has created in my country. <coughs> 